Here I have a system where you'll see most of my devices are gigabit, but there are a few hundred megabit devices at the top. As usual, Dante established one clock leader, and if I go to the Network Status tab, we can see that nothing is transmitting or receiving right now. The less than one megabit per second is as low as our system can display. Really, that traffic represents the overhead of discovery, clocking, control reporting, and things like that. OK, so let's go to the Routing tab, and we'll focus on the stage box and the first mixer. I'll also open the Device view for the stage box so we can check in on the flow count. Here, we can see that this is not using any of its 32 flows currently. As soon as I make my first subscription, we'll see the stage box is sending about 5 to 6 megabits of data to the mixer. And if we look at the flows used, we'll see there is now one unicast flow. Nothing too surprising, right? OK, let's go back and create three more subscriptions between these same two devices. So now we have four channels going from the stage box to the mixer we can see that there's no change in bandwidth. It's the same 5 to 6 megabits that we had before. And if we look at the stage box, we see there are no more flows being used. So again, when we send a unicast stream, it's automatically set as a four-channel flow, whether you're using one or all four channels. OK, so we've got one unicast flow running right now. Let's subscribe a fifth channel. Indeed, if we look at our bandwidth, we see an additional 5 to 6 megabits for the additional flow, climbing to about 11 to 12 megabits per second. If we look in the flow counter, we indeed see that a second flow has begun. OK, I think we get the idea here. So let's take bigger steps. Let's subscribe all 16 channels from this stage box. Of course, 16 channels divided by 4 channels per flow, that means we need 4 flows. And of course, we're only going to one destination right now. Let's see what happens as we create subscriptions for additional devices. Let's send these same 16 channels to the monitor desk. Since this is unicast, we're going to have to send this twice. We can see our bandwidth climbs to 48 megabits per second, about 24 megabits to each receiver. And of course, we see our flow count go up. We're using eight flows in total, four to each receiver. OK, once more for good measure. Let's send this to a digital audio workstation for recording as well. Again, we see our bandwidth go up on the transmitter as we use more flows. Now, the good news is that Unicast only goes from the transmitter to the destination. It doesn't hit anybody else on this network. Now, Unicast is great when I want to send different signals to different locations. But in this example, I'm sending the exact same signals to three different destinations. Now, I might still decide to do this by unicast, perhaps to achieve lower latency. But just for the example, let's flip this to multicast and see what the difference would be. At the bottom of Dante Controller, we'll see a reading that tells us how much multicast we're sending cumulatively. Now, this is just an estimate based on the subscriptions we've created. If I look in the Transmitter tab, there is a section that will show us how many multicast flows we have going at a time. Right now, we have none. In the tool ribbon, you'll see the icon for multicast, the dot with the forked arrow indicating we are splitting the signal on the network. Click on that, and we can choose the channels that we want to send in a multicast flow. Remember, we can have up to eight channels in a single flow. In this case, I'll just choose the first eight channels from the stage box and click Create. Now, we can see a list of channels that we've grouped together in a multicast feed. So at this point, if somebody was to ask for channels 1 through 8, they would receive the multicast flow. If they ask for a 9 through 16, they'll get those by unicast. OK, for this example, let's get channels 9 through 16 so they are also transmitting multicast. And indeed, we see those channels listed here as a second multicast flow. If we look at our bandwidth used, we see we're only using 21 megabits per second to send those 16 channels to three destinations. When it was sent by unicast, this was around 72 megabits per second. So this reduces the load on the transmitter significantly. Indeed, we can see we're still reaching the three devices we wanted to reach. No problem there. However, look up and down this list. We'll see that everyone is receiving this traffic. Now what does that tell you? Well, that probably tells you IGMP snooping is not engaged yet. 
because multicast traffic is going everywhere. Now, if this was all the multicast traffic we had, we could have a discussion about should IGMP snooping be engaged or not. It might not really matter one way or the other. But before I turn on IGMP snooping, let me take us out to the breaking point and we'll see the difference that it would make. Up here, I have a Dante AV transmitter. This is receiving a signal from a camera that is pointed at my set here. Right now, we can see this is not transmitting to anyone. No devices have requested this subscription yet. If I look at the flow count for this video device, we'll see it keeps track separately of flows for video, audio, and control. Let's suppose I know I want to send this video feed to multiple destinations. Flipping this to multicast can give us a significant bandwidth advantage. To make the multicast subscription, again, I click on the multicast icon, select the video channel, and click Create. Now watch what happens to the bandwidth on the devices. I can see the device is starting to transmit 103 megabits. Now remember, no video receivers have subscribed to this image yet, and yet we're transmitting it. Well remember, a multicast transmitter doesn't know who's supposed to receive a specific signal. It just transmits, puts a multicast subscription ID on it, and trusts the switch to get it to the destination. So even with no one asking for the subscription, the multicast transmitter started putting out this 103 megabit stream. Since we don't have IGMP snooping engaged yet, you can see the traffic is going to all devices on the network. The devices at the bottom are one gigabit, so they're able to manage this traffic no problem. But look at the three devices at the top that are only 100 megabit devices. We are overwhelming them beyond their capacity. All right, so let's turn on IGMP snooping and show you how that helps. For expediency, I've already made the other settings for IGMP snooping on other pages. You can see the Manage Switch tutorial for suggestions on that. At this point, all I need to use is these master on-off controls. Once I engage IGMP snooping in an IGMP querier, watch the bandwidth statistics in Dante Controller. You'll see the improvement made with traffic management. Now it's safe to say that some switches might take a few minutes for this to take effect. Others will be faster like what we're seeing here. At this point, I can see the 21 megabits of traffic from the stage box is only going to the devices who have asked for it. The 103 megabit video flow has not been requested by any devices, so it holds fast at the switch. And of course, the devices not involved with multicast traffic are not bothered at all. Okay, it's time for a little extra credit. I'll show you some shortcuts that will help you with massive subscription lists as well as converting multiple channels to multicast at the same time. First, let's suppose that we want to send the inputs from the second stage box to the mixers and the digital audio workstation. When we wanted to route this before, we were able to establish a diagonal route in the main routing screen. But you'll notice it can't continue for the second stage box that way. I mean, if I come to the top, I'll get a diagonal route, but it will overwrite the patches from the first stage box. We need these channels to start the diagonal route from channel 1 to 17, 2 to 18, and so on. I could click at each intersection one at a time, but there is a simpler way. Let's go to the receiver's device view in the receiving tab. In the left column, we have all the receiving channels. On the right, we have all the transmitters on the network. We can select the range of channels we wish to assign and simply drag them over. If you look in the routing grid to the right, you'll see these subscriptions reflected. Now, I'll do it again for the monitor mixer, then once more for the front of house console. Okay, now remember, by default, these are all going to be sent by unicast. We want them all to be sent by multicast. Well, when I go to the multicast assignment pop-up, if you want to assign all channels, just click the box at the top. When you hit Create, Dante Controller will automatically break them into eight channel groups for you. And sure enough, as we look at the bandwidth, we can tell that the multicast streams are taking effect. This was a clip from the Dante Certification Program. To learn more, go to Audinate.com slash certify.